really synergize that well with the Bloodlust. The attack speed is not really Ursa's weak point. I mean, it's not bad, but Overpower is a pretty spammable ability. Yeah. Hmm. Well, personally, what I dislike most about it is... Uh... I mean, even disregarding the synergy, because like Ursa kind of synergizes with himself. What I feel like Fnatic have done with that pick is they've locked themselves into this position where if they lose one team fight, all of a sudden this PBC lineup is going to not only take a tower but gain a huge amount of map control with the Sand King just being able to farm up jungles and Disruptor being able to apply more pressure by putting more map boards and Undying just having a presence overall. Like these five heroes on Fnatic have to commit really deep just to Ten kill a couple heroes on BBC remaining. because Undying and Sand King are so good teamfight disruptors. Not five to mention the Death seconds. Prophet having the silence remaining. and probably gonna farm Sky Slark. Yeah. I think Fnatic are in a tough spot here. I'm inclined to agree with that, especially since I've seen the W 3-3, or I, I've been told that his name is actually Weeha, and that's like a shortened version of it so that it fits with the Vulcan Bears. Um, but anyhow, I, I've seen his Slark, and it's it's very good. Uh, very high skill cap player, as we talked about, but very elusive, very hard to kill, and he's one of those guys that as soon as he finds that level 6, he'll be moving around looking for opportunities to gank, just irritate people, and I, I don't think Fnatic will have an easy time here. They also don't really have any pushing yeah. power. So that's one of those where even if they can take a good team fight, taking objectives won't come that easy. Whereas BBC have the Death Prophet that they can always rely on. Or if they win a fight uh, with an exorcism, you, you should be able to knock down towers pretty damn mm -hmm. easily. I guess the one thing going for Fnatic is they have, they have Roshan potential Remaining. with that Ursa pickup. Anytime Ursa's in the game, there's Roshan potential. But again, just the, the cutting potential on the side of BBC in a team fight against this uh, four melee lineup of Fnatic, and granted, some of them don't really care about melee distance because they just want to cast spells at a distance. Even then, I'm, I'm somewhat wary for them. Yeah, they don't have a huge amount of lockdown for the Earth, so I guess they have a little bit. If Centaur can get a decently timed blink, that'll be okay. You can always blink in, hoof stomp to set things up for Ursa. And you've got the RP, so you've got these these two core blink heroes, and Ursa will may, may well grab a blink dagger himself. So they do have a lot of gap closers to kind of set up for him, but it, it's one of these, if everything goes according to plan, it'll be great for Fnatic. But they have this ease of execution roadblock where... Um, it's not going to be so easy to execute, I don't think, yeah. unless BBC are really sloppy with their positioning. Yeah, I think so as well. Like, it's it's so snowball oriented just by looking at the lineup. Again, so much magical damage and uh, the positioning based on how the Ursa engages the fight, it's going to be really rough for them. Yeah. But as the game ensues, here we go, Zyri. Yep, teams are ready to rock and roll, and I'm actually curious. I wonder if there are Dota 2 lounge bets for this, where the... the the fans have, have voted because with this new Fnatic roster, oh, D2L is offline for A maintenance. Okay, well, never mind. I'm curious just to see how the bets are because this new Fnatic roster, we've seen so little of it. It's kind of MYM plus Hani, and then um, Fnatic is, well, yeah. The, then Trixie is splintered off with his uh, four anchor team, the Finn stack. I'm not sure how they've been doing either. I haven't really seen them recently. <laughs> been interesting. Well, let's see how things will start off. Fnatic will do a 2-1-2, it looks like. We'll have Ace on the Centaur, and Rise will be on the Ogre. They'll be headed to the bottom lane. Arise will be taking mid on the Magnus. No big surprise there. It'll be Hani in the safe lane on the Ursa, and uh, he will be supported by Come With Me on the Skywrath Mage. Man, we've seen a big influx of 2-1-2s coming out, especially in uh, the Eastern scene more so. That seems to be all the rooms right now in the... In the West, in Europe, we've seen some teams adapt it, but it's still primarily these tri-lanes, and that's what BBC is going to do. They'll have Levy on the Disruptor, Solitude on the Sand King, and that'll put uh, Weeha safe lane farming on the Slark, Haki on the Death Prophet mid, and Petrino, he'll go for the offlane Undying, which is an interesting change of pace also. Yeah, this Undying is going to be especially hard to kill. He has the Stealth Shield and three armor to boot, but most importantly the DK, which can give him like a potential immediate strength boost. And it looks like they're gonna have a slight face off as I say that. No, no engagements at the top. Come with me, grabs himself the Invis Rune, and will be able to poise himself for good harassment on the Undying Solo. So, what, what do you think in general about the 2 1 2 versus the 1 1 3? Obviously, that'll secure a lot of farm for Slark, but um, likewise, Hani should have a lot of farm also. Are, are you a, f a, f a fan of the 2 1 2 over the 1 1 3? 
Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm biased a little bit because that's how we at Cloud9 like to run our lanes. We never really do trial lanes because it's just inefficient around the map and Ryze is about to get picked off the first blood. Yeah, he's in some big trouble here. The Pounce will connect and Disruptor has the Kinetic Field level 1. There's your first blood. It's a little bit anti-hype as the Creeps get the last hit and the gold is split. But still, the Ogre falls and BBC find a little bit of gold in their pockets to get things started. Yeah. Honestly though, this is just one of those scenarios where 2-1-2 is like necessary, but it's not really good. And the reason being is, when you have a 2-1-2 and your dual lane aggressive is a centaur set up by an ogre magi, that means both heroes have to commit to diving one hero just to guarantee the kill. And most of the time against the tri lane, you're gonna have a turnaround situation where the events go as you guys just feeding a double kill at one point. Even if you secure the one kill that you're going for, it's just not worth it. So I think BBC have significant, like, significantly outlined them here, but well, yeah, we are about to go down. Yeah, he'll get stunned, pounces out, but the kinetic field is there, and that kind of stops them dead in their tracks. It's two very tanky heroes, the Centaur and the Ogre, but they're still melee, and that gives Disruptor the Radiant option to harass them pretty easily, out. and He's even though it's two melee trouble. heroes on the side of BBC, there's just not a lot of harassing they can put out without sacrificing a fair amount of their hit points also, and regeneration is... Uh, kind of few and far between. Two tangos on the uh, Ogre and three tangos on the Centaur. That's not a hell of a lot of regeneration. Yeah, honestly, I don't I don't see this aggressive dueling working out for them at all at this point. Even if the Centaur can sap EXP, what they've given the Sand King and the Disruptor is confidence that they can stay in the lane and fight up against the two. Which means that uh, they'll just lose creep control very soon. Yeah. So let's check in on the other lanes here. Mid seems to be going well for the Death Prophet. A uh, slightly tilted lane for her, I suppose, at least until Arise gets his bottle out. He is struggling in the... Oh, he, no, he does have it. Okay, never mind. He uh, went for the fast bottle. It's just being crowed. So he's catching up a little bit fairly even there. How's the off lane going for Pedrino? Uh, he has not picked up a last hit yet, but he is leeching some decent experience. At least found his level 2. Not a huge amount of kill potential. Skywrath could come into the lane and... Throw a concussive, but uh, Radiant Vision, nope, not a hell of a lot. Just has a, a ward down in the river. So, Padrino playing it safe, moving into the jungle a little bit here and there. But uh, I think there is some kill potential if that Skywrath rotates over once Hani hits, uh, hits level 3 or 4. Yeah. Even though um, even though that's not exactly happening, the whole killing thing, the lane is still going vastly in their favor, as you said. Padrino has 0 CS right now, but most importantly, Hani has been able to assert his dominance in the lane because now Padrino realizes Hani can basically solo kill him. Mm -hmm. So come with these, going to try to harass this one time, and I would assume that he wants to rotate out even if the pull is available. He wants to pull it once maybe and then just walk out, maybe help the bottom lane, because that's where they're hurting the most right now. Yeah, and if Ogre leaves this bottom lane, that'll open up some space for the Sand King to start working the jungle. He doesn't have any stacks up quite yet to get his Sandstorm on, but Rise will pull a rotation. He's found his level 2, has Ignite, and he's looking towards this Death Prophet. Uh, Rise is only level 4 after this Creep Wave. will find his level 5 at the next point in Shockwave, but this won't be the easiest gank. Maybe if he can land a, a fun Skewer, they'll have an option, but... Nope, Ryze will just scout it out, then eventually waddles his way back down towards bottom. He has picked up an Orb of Venom, though. I do like this on the Ogre. Boots Orb, he's kind of roaming around and looking for that extra kill potential. Oh, and the Death Prophet just uh, shot up a, shot up a Crypt Swarm up the hill without vision, just to try and zone out the Magnus. So Magnus decides to bottle crow out of it, and in the meantime, the double damage rune is secured by Ryze at the bottom lane. Bottom rune. Yeah. DP grabs the bounty up top, and Rise looking for his option here. He does have a lot of slow potential with that value point and ignite, plus the orb of venom at uh, 20 plus 12. Pretty solid. And if he catches basically anyone but the Slark, there is a, some kill potential. But Slark very elusive. Will level up the pounce to get that extra damage there and the shorter cooldown. And his farm is looking good. He's the, la uh, the last hit lead now, kind of tangoing with the uh, oh, pigeon. Yeah, with Hani up top, but Fedrino, he'll just get silenced. His tombstone gets finished off, so Hani gets a little pick-me-up there, but he's got his boots, he's on the run, and it looks like the Undying will be just fine. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, though, Haki in some trouble as Rise is rotated over. Arise, no, yeah, Arise will uh, bring him down. This is, wow, confusing. Rise and Arise yeah, in the same lane. Yeah, Arise right? Oh, confusing boy, what a tongue twister. Too. Yeah, Ogre gets credit for that one, but they do find a successful kill on the uh, DP, so that's definitely good news. Yeah, a really huge kill. I mean, in the meantime, while Ogre was just walking around the enemy jungle, uh, BBC supports were kind of afraid, so that was really, really good for them. It gave a lot of room for Centaur to breathe in the bottom lane, but room he gets no more as BBC Weeha going on the aggressive. 
Yeah, finds the kill there, gets one last poke with the dagger and gets a solo kill on the centaur. He'll now find his level 5. Can the ogre get a turnaround kill? There is a dark pact available. He may need to use it. The Orb of Venom, gonna do some damage here, but not nearly enough for a kill. It's plenty of regeneration, we will be able to pounce, and just barely survives. Gets off the healing salve, and Weehaw will be very happy with that one. And not only getting a lot of gold out of that, but a decent chunk of experience now halfway through his level 5. He's gonna come back to the lane, he's just about to hit level 5, which is really good news. So he'll probably have the level 3 double edge available for him. So Weehaw needs to be careful until he gets 6. And in the meantime, Tanya on top lane, they finally secured the kill on the Undying. Yeah, and that's kind of what we were talking about with the Concussive and the Ancient Seal. Hani should be able to get in quite a few auto attacks to overpower, and as his face boots up now. So both carries, finding some kills. Not the solo kill for Hani, but still great news for him. And net worth-wise, he is actually a, a little bit ahead of that of the Slark by just about 300 gold or so. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at the CS board too. I mean, they are both leading on the side of Fnatic, so this is somewhat of a surprise to me, even though the bottom lane went well so well for BBC. The two heroes actually did their job in zoning out the enemy and, and I guess putting a little bit of fear into them. So the Sand King and the Disruptor haven't been able to move around freely. Although although I feel like they could have done a little bit more as well. I guess with the contesting of runes and stuff like that, it's not as easy as it seems. Yeah, Solitude is gonna move into the jungle now. He'll wait out this big camp and start stacking it up. We're six and a half minutes in and this Sand King is 1300 gold towards his Blink Dagger, actually not too shabby. He has that one assist from earlier on, and oh gosh, I'm gonna miss another kill on Petrino up top. Beginning. Looks like they'll just rinse and repeat, same kind of a deal. Concussive shot, Hani can run in, and at this point, I think Petrino just needs to sacrifice this lane. There's there's not a hell of a lot he can do against that combo. Yeah, and with the Tombstone chasing in, he actually lost the creep, Creepy equilibrium creep there, with the Creeps pushing in. I'm not sure if Hani's too intent on controlling it right now, though. I mean, it's seven minutes in, and he's pretty big. So I guess I want to push it, force it into the tower and fight up. This is also a very unconventional Ursa pickup here. He actually bought up a Ring of Aquila. I think this is actually the first time I've ever seen a Ring of Aquila being built up on an Ursa. Yeah, certainly not a very common item. Maybe a sign that they'll want to push this tower a little bit. Um, hmm. Yeah, usually yeah. you'll see Ursa basically just rush the Blink Dagger or a Force Staff in the case of not being able to get the Blink fast enough. Yeah, but some then, sort of a gap closer seems to be key. Yeah, and then they most of the time follow it up with the the Vladimir's, which is pretty much the mm -hmm. perfect synergy for us. Though. I mean, people yeah. say you don't need it because bottle. I mean, mana problems are kind of solved by the fact that Blink Dagger doesn't cost mana anymore. But even then, you you really want the life leech on the hero, and you want some sort of passive mana region. So I guess the Quila kind of answers for that. Yeah, the the Vlads though is really what opens up the Roche possibilities. That's another reason you'll see Ursa's rush the Vlad, so you can go and Roche at like the nine ten minute mark and find a solo kill. Without the life steal, that's not going to be a possibility, but I guess Hani playing this a little more straight up, not going for the, the sneaky Ursa moving into the Roche, but more the kind of true position one where he'll just farm away and vision of the enemies and uh, move into the tower now. Padrino, he's in some trouble. He's stuck in the tree line. There's nowhere for him to go. There's even an RP here. I don't think they'll need it though. Yeah, Ancient Seal will come in, Shockwave, and uh, this time it'll be a rise that picks up the kill as Hani's looking around the tree line. Haki will come in and look to repel. There is a Hastrian on the Magnus, and he'll just barely dodge that uh, Crypt Swarm. But this is a very early Blink Dagger on the Magnus, and here you go. There's the RP on Haki. He'll get skewered back, and Hani just lays in the right, uh, right clicks from the overpower. And he'll find a double kill up top, and now this Tier 1 tower will take a lot of pressure. Yeah, I honestly wish that the Haki decided to stay in the mid lane where the Magnus popped the haste to go top. I, I feel like it was unnecessary for him to go there. I mean, barring the death overall, if he stayed at mid lane and the Magnus presence third, he could push the creep wave with his Crypt Swarm level 4, and then he could just take the tower with the Exorcism or force a TP or two. But instead, he just forfeited his life at the top lane, now they lose the tower and they lost two heroes. It's it's a pretty grim situation overall. Yeah, it was looking kind of even, but all of a sudden Fnatic with a 3,000 gold and experience lead. Hani gets the last hit on the tower, number one on net worth by a good bit. Weeha still farming well in the safe lane, but he's kind of the only one. Death Prophet has fallen off, and uh, the Sand King, he will have his Blink Dagger coming out now, which is an, a pretty solid timing, actually. Pre-10 minutes, skewer down bottom, just barely off the mark as Weeha does live. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Padrino gets slowed up once more. This time, he'll live to tell the tale. Only level 4, working on probably Tranquil Boots, but he does live and prevents another feed from coming out. Yeah, it's nice for him to be able to survive here. He'll get some bit more EXP and his tombstone will probably become level 3 after he hits 5 with this creep wave. Uh, but he is still away from 7. I think he needs to participate in a team fight and watch one of the enemy heroes die to pick up the necessary EXP.
But it, wow. it's hard again because they lost a lot of map control with the tower going down, and of course Magnus having the impact that he has right now. Arise picking up all the runes and going around. Now he just came back from bottom to mid lane. He can always apply that skewer potential with the blink dagger, and the enemy is of course very wary of that right now. So I think the map opened up a little bit more for Fnatic, which means Hani, if he wants to, he can go into the Roche pit. And Weha is actually checking that right now. He's about to detect the smoke as well. Ooh, Hani, good awareness. Ooh, close call. Yeah, I like this from Hani. He splits the Aquila, just hangs on to the uh, Wraith Band, and now moves right into the Vlad's offering. So really just a value pickup while he was in lane and does go back to that more standard build we were talking about. And his yeah. smoke will not be revealed as he moves into the Roche pit. But we'll see. Uh oh, Haki, he's going to walk in that way with an invisibility rune as there's a fight breaking out down bottom. Weeha takes a Mystic Flare, will be able to survive. Haki scouting this out, and we'll see. He's got a lot of time on this invis rune. I don't oh think enough gosh. just to snipe the Aegis, but they'll come in. Hani's in big trouble. Weeha goes right for it. They'll drop the hammer on top of him. Haki even uses the Exorcism, and they'll try to snipe the Roche. But in come the reinforcements for Fnatic. Whoa. There's your RP on two. Weeha and Solitude in big trouble. They'll both get taken out. Solitude survives a bit longer. But now focus on the hockey. Blink Dagger from the Sand King will keep him alive. Now the Tombstone down from Pedrino. A lot of ghouls coming out, and they'll start to clean things up. They're trying to focus it down. They'll finish it off. They get the kill on the Sand King. It's Hani in exchange for three, and it's not even over yet. Pedrino still in the prey. Out comes the ultimate from the Disruptor. That's enough to bring down the Ogre. Pedrino lives. Shockwave off the mark. It's a two for three, all things considered. And Roche still standing. So even though it started out bad for Fnatic, they're right there with the recovery. Yeah, that was honestly somewhat of an odd sequence of events. Like, first of all, the Sand King, the altitude, he blinked in at the bottom lane and completely whipped his epi epicenter. So he lost half his mana pool and had to clear it up. But most importantly, he didn't have the ultimate available for him. And secondly, they, they went in into the Roshan actually and hold that thought. We are going in again. Yeah, he'll get a kill on the Skyrath, and Aegis will go the way of Hani, both finished off by the Dire. They'll double edge down the Slark, and it ends up being a bit of a feed from Riha. Skewer off the mark again from Arise, moves into the tree line, but can't catch the Sand King. One for one, but they get a kill in the position one in exchange for their support. And of course, Roche is finished off with the Aegis now in the hands of Hani. Now the fight breaking out on the high ground as Arise goes in. Levy getting clicked down by Hani. He'll be able to finish him off despite the kinetic field. They will still lose the Magnus, but uh, Haki in some trouble. Hani going as deep as he can. Crypt Swarm flies through, but not enough to finish off the Ursa. Now they'll just turn on to Solitude as Centaurs join the party. Tombstone comes down. And with that, it looks like Fnatic will start to sound the retreat. More Crypt Swarms coming out, but they just don't do a hell of a lot right now. Yeah, I, I don't know how... I honestly don't like how BBC took that fight. I think they could have waited for the Roche to go down a little bit more. There was plenty of time on the Invis run still. Radiant so, I feel like uh, if the Roshan was a bit lower, they could have followed up with the Exorcism kill on the Roche immediately, which would have allowed them to take the Aegis and fight back. As I say that Weha and hmm. Levy secure another kill on center, who's kind of been idling around in the jungle even though he had nothing left. He does, however, has, have his Blink Dagger, and he has to speed up when he next spawns 20 seconds after. So they'll be able to go back on the aggressive. Yeah, so that little pickoff will give Weeha a little bit of a bump in terms of his net worth, but still Fnatic making out huge from that uh, kind of being... A long skirmish outside of the Roche pit. 4,000 gold, about 3,500 experience now in the Dyer's favor. So when it's all said and done, they've still got a big lead. And Hani still has the Aegis. That secures his Blink Dagger. So now three Blinks on the side of the Dyer and just the one on the Radiant in the hands of the Sand King. So this is about that time when Fnatic will get very aggressive. We'll see in the mid lane. Haki gets hit by the RP. Skewer back, takes a silence. Mystic Flare won't be there to do a hell of a lot. Stun on two from Solitude. And in comes Pedrino with the Tombstone. Oh, and Weeha coming in off the side. They'll finish off the Magnus, and in comes Solitude now. He's at the epicenter. It's a three for nil, and all of a sudden, BBC strike back and regain some of that lost footing. Ends up being a triple for the Slark. They save the Exorcism, and now they will be rewarded with a Tier 1 tower. Yeah, this is really, really huge. Not only is that like a good scenario for comeback and the turnaround overall, but Hani also TP'd mid lane, and then he got sent back home by the glimpse, which means he had to just walk his way back. And all this time, even with the Aegis, he's not farming. He's just looking entirely for kills. And they also invested the RP for that, which means that's not up for the immediate next skirmish they're looking for, or the next skirmish. And in the meantime, Levy actually gets picked off by Hani. So this is one nice thing that Ursa can do at this stage. But as the game proceeds, this slark's just going to get bigger and be able to snipe out targets at a similar rate, but mm -hmm. also scale better on top of the Undying, which can apply the team fight slow with the Tombstone yeah. and the other heroes that they have to boot with the with the Death Prop at the backlines, applying the Exorcism damage. 
So overall, Fnatic, they, they should feel hard pressed to do something right now. Even if yeah. it's just going kills or smoking, they, they need to grab objectives. And right now, they don't have the map control they desire, even with the Roshan bench. Yeah, it looks like they will group up and take some heed to your advice as they move as a five-man unit towards the Tier 1 tower in the mid lane. RP will be up in about 25 seconds, so uh, they can take a team fight as it's cooling down. Weeha is going for a Shadow Blade on this lock. Has the amulet about 400 gold away from the Claymore. So he'll be there uh, pretty soon. That'll give him a lot of mobility to set up kills. We'll see some TP rotations towards the mid lane. They've already lost the Disruptor, but Hani in the front lines trying to click down the Tombstone. He will lose his Aegis for it. Weeha gets skewered down to the low ground, forces out the ultimate and Hani will blink to safety as soon as he comes up so kind of an odd exchange but just a disruptor for ages not quite what Fnatic had in mind but now a silence on three from Haki and Fnatic will be repelled at least for now they'll hold the high ground here in the radiant jungle and BBC will start to back up they don't have an exorcism for another 30 DP with a regeneration rune on does have her Yules coming out really soon here about 400 gold away from that last piece in the void stone mm -hmm. I like what Fnatic are doing in response now. They're farming up the enemy jungle, and with the creep wave being at the present at the bottom lane, they're probably going to push that out next. The other nice thing is that they forced like three to four TPs on the side of BBC to the mid lane, and BBC kind of repelled the push, as you said, somewhat successfully. But the fact that Fnatic have such a fine and nice follow up here at the bottom lane means that they can gain the advantage back where they want it. So BBC, they won't be in time to react to this one, I don't think. Um, you know what, they actually want to go. I think they want to defend, and that's Radiant fine, but that's Prophet Battle still doesn't have her next item, which is the Yule Scepter. So it's going to be a tough fight, even though they have Exorcism, because Fnatic already have the positioning necessary. Yeah, and they smoke up here, so this is sort of an odd, almost a fake back. They've got a well, lane ward down, we'll take a look at the Dire Vision. They see Haki, they jump right on him, the trap has been set, and now it's been sprung. Death Prophet falls to start off the fight, Disruptor comes in with an ultimate, and the Epicenter channeling in the middle of it. Solitude will be able to get it off, doing a lot of damage, finishes off Hani, and they've already lost the Skywrath Mage. It's a one for two, despite the beautiful initiation from Fnatic, and they will be repelled. Yeah, that was that was a pretty messy fight for Fnatic. They committed so many heroes just to dive the Death Prophet, and even though they secured the kill, their backlines was just getting slashed up by a Slark. And same thing again, Slark is just going in into the other targets. Yeah, and now Rise, he's in some big trouble. There will be a Stampede, won't be enough to keep him alive. Instead, Ace, he'll just charge into the rest of the team, and I'm not sure what the plan was there. Now we see the plan, Arise comes in, RP on three, Skewer on to four, he gets the kill on the Slark, ends the streak. So many low health heroes, but he's all by his lonesome. The stun from Solitude, and then he'll be able to hop back to safety with the blink. Arise looking to clean this up. Such a huge opportunity there for Fnatic, but unfortunately they just had no follow-up damage. Skywrath had a Mystic Flare, but wasn't in position to get it off to clean up those kills. Ah, he's still going, man. Oh, just missed it. It's a shame. Tried to get the Sand King with that last shot wave, but couldn't get it, which is fine. I think the biggest story there is that he did get the Slark, which is definitely worth the commitment of the RP. It's a, it's a shame that there were so many low HP targets that just had to walk away. Mm -hmm. Um but it is what it is, and they do get the Slark, which is the most important story, so... In the end, they'll rotate the two heroes bottom, and I guess they'll ensue sort of pressure slash push kind of thing, but I don't see it happening too much success without Hani. Mm -hmm. So, the big problem though is even though they end the, the streak on Slark, BBC still have completely recovered from a big deficit they found themselves at in the early stage. Golden experience are completely zeroed out, and as you pointed out, uh, an even game on the Slark and Ursa is good news for BBC. Right now, Ursa is still pretty strong as we're early on, but as things continue, this Ursa is going to start to fall off, and we'll see this Slark really shine with that essence shift, and especially as he grabs more, uh, more items and continues to tank up. Another smoke rotation from Fnatic moving into the Radiant Jungle. It is only three heroes, the Centaur leading the charge. Blink Dagger at the ready, has the Stampede also, but now the Yule Scepter is out on the Death Prophet, and actually BBC smoked up, and they'll rotate the other way, kind of dodging this smoke from Fnatic in Invermoon. Oh, Rise. Yeah, Rise needs to be really careful here. And, oh, the Slark scouting him out with his Shadow Blade. Oh! What a blink reaction there. But he'll find Levy in the jungle, or pardon me, they'll find Honey in the jungle. Levy scouts it out. W3-3 taking a lot of damage, pounces, misses it, but Hani's still in some trouble as he's stuck inside of the Static Storm. He ends up going down. Now the rest of Fnatic need to decide how they want to handle this. There's the old Scepter out on the Centaur. That stops his blink dead in the tracks. And Sand King going in, catches a stun on one. Arise, RP on two, skewer back into the tower, right into the Mystic Flare, Disruptor dies straight away, and the Sand King soon to follow. Now a one for two, going the way of Fnatic. 
Haki uses his ultimate, but will they be able to do much with this exorcism? And it's starting to look like that's a resounding no. Yeah, even though they've committed their ultimates, Hani's still dead again. This is most of the time, like, this is the problem with running Ursa as the solo hard carry kind of thing, is that you're still reliant on this hero who actually doesn't have a very good method of gap closer, because even if he commits a blink dagger, most of the time he finds one or another way to get kited after he dishes out his initial kit with the overpower mm -hmm. and the enrage. So it's it's gonna be a rough game, and I think they need like a repeat of what they just did at the tier two tower with Arise landing a massive ulti skewer followed up by everybody just dishing out their burst damage, probably like two to three times before they can take the tower comfortably. Yeah, so a little bit of a wasted exorcism, but still not a not a huge change in the net worth. Like as you mentioned, it's a two for one, but they get the uh, they get that valuable target in the position one Ursa and slowing down Honey's yeah. farm a fair bit as Weeha just staying aggressive here with the Shadow Blade. Looking to interrupt Hani, kind of scouting around to see if there's any friends nearby. He will reveal himself and Hani will just blink back to safety. But still, even just being this presence here, it's slowing down Hani's farm quite a bit as he's moving around the map. Looks like he will set his sights towards the Ancients, and Second Rush has respawned, so perhaps that's where Fnatic will look as uh, they start to group up in this area of the map. And yep, there you go, Hani blinks right into the pit. BBC, they have no ward coverage in this area. There's actually a Dire Sentry ward down. So, unless they react soon, Hani will have an uncontested Roche for himself. Yeah, we are actually circled it. I'm pretty sure they're aware, but they decided that their heroes are so far out of position that it's not worth the commitment. And even then, um, Fnatic will have superior positioning by that point with the Centaur Stampede and the, and the Magnus on the medium. So, I think it's a wise call to just trade the Tier 1 Dire or Tier 2 Dire for the Roshan. Most of the time, it's a Tier 2 Dire for Roshan. But looks like uh, Fnatic want to save their Tier 2 this time around, so everybody's just rushing over. Yeah, they do have a glyph, of course, from that tier 1 falling just moments ago. And, uh, Weeha will just stick around. Gets the tower down to about half health before they start to react. Charges up the Dark Pact and will scoot to safety. The Blink Brothers are in full force in the front lines. And Arise has the invisibility rune on as he charges in, looking for that perfect opening with his RP. And we'll just use a solo RP onto Weeha, but pushes him into a silence. And they've got more than enough damage to burst down the Slark. Nice setup from Arise and good use of the solo RP. Yeah, that was super nice. Um, I think one thing that could have happened is Weeha, like he was walking around the general general area for a very long time with the with the top push happening, and I think he was watching something else because if he was watching his hero, his shadow dance actually went away, his passive, and I guess that would have ring the bell kind of to let him know that there was an invis target on top of him so he might have been able to react but regardless it's it's hard to anticipate that kind of thing coming so a really nice initiation by Arise of two invis, invis rune I would have to say and they do get a tier 1 tower out of it so that's really nice as well yeah nice gold boost going the way of Fnatic and Hani now very close to his BKB actually he's about 100 gold off has the two core pieces and 1200 to boot so clearing out these creeps in the radiant jungle will certainly secure it and Always a good time for the Ursa, one of his uh, kind of second peaks, I guess you could say, when he has that magic immunity, though. One of these games where the BKB is only going to do so much. You've still got extra, you've still got Slark to commence all those right clicks, uh, which do hurt quite a bit. He will have an ultimate orb picked up now, and I guess this is a Scotty coming out for Weeha, but yeah. certainly does have a few options. I would imagine as well. No, no item that's really better on Slark overall in terms of perfect energy. Come with me, he's farming the jungle, and Weeha's looking to scout out somebody, but I guess due to the unfortunate timing of Come with me just hitting up the last creep there, he won't be able to spot him out. They were farming at different camps anyway, so... Yep. Uh, Ursa does find his BKB now, has the Aegis of the Immortal still online, so I think this is a window of opportunity for Fnatic to try and take a team fight. If they have their ultimates up, they should go for it, and they'll have the RP cooling down in just about five seconds or so. Blink over the tree line, right into Levy. Hani hits him with a thunder clap, and, or that first shock, I suppose it's called, and more than enough to bring it down. Pedrino now getting clicked pretty hard, and key off to the side. We'll manage to get off his Yules, but in comes Solitude with an epicenter. Will, be, will there be any cleanup? Gets a lot of heroes low, finishes off the Centaur, but this is a one for four trade. Weeha's nowhere to be found. He's just farming in the top lane all by his lonesome. And Fnatic take a huge fight off these ultimates. And actually, they don't even really use any ultimates. They got the Stampede. It was just a terrible initiation for BBC. Yeah, that was that was just really messy and kind of sloppy from them overall. Also, I think Ace could have been kept alive if Ryze either realized that he had dust earlier or if Arise this time decided to commit the Skewer or the RP just to stop the channeling of the Sandstorm. It definitely would have been worth it because their push would have been a little bit stronger. 
Now mm -hmm. they have to be worried about the two targets that are up on BBC, even with just their three heroes, because Radiance they're missing the ultimate in the stampede, or, or rather the central Tower presence, because the stampede attack. was used earlier. And uh, and yeah, overall their presence is kind of lacking, so their tower hitting abilities aren't that Radiance strong. Bottom tower yeah. is under attack. So they get the tier 1 bottom, and tier 2, well, they'll do a little bit of damage to it. They kind of click it down. Weeha is well, not that close to the Scotty, if that's Radiance what he's going for, basically he's still an ultimate attack. orb away. So he's going to need to farm a little while longer before that big item comes online, and Fnatic have jumped way back in the lead now. It's been a pretty back-and-forth game, but 5,000 gold, 7,500 experience now in their favor. Weeha with the uh, Shadow Blade on, finds a rise in the tree line here, and he will just blink up to the high ground. No initiation will come out there, and we haven't talked about Ogre at all, but Rise, he's damn close to an Aghanim Scepter. Does he actually have it coming out here? He does not. It's still one piece of weapon, about 900 gold. RP in the mid, on to Weeha. He manages to get off the ultimate as Hani comes in. Still has his BKB, but they've got a gem of true sight, so uh, the Shadow Blade only going to do so much. Now Weeha silenced. They'll find another pickoff, and Fnatic just regaining so much momentum here. Ogre now only 750 off, having that unrefined Fire Blast. Yeah, be, honestly, BBC are just playing so split up in a, in a situation where their team fight would actually excel and be able to take on the enemy, even against the PKB and the Aegis on, on Honey. Like, if they have the Undying's presence with the Tombstone, it would just annoy all these melee blink heroes so much that they wouldn't be able to maneuver it properly. And with Disruptor just landing a massive guaranteed silence on top of anybody instantly, along with Death Prophet doing the same thing, and having the two second Dual Scepter. Uh, as I say that, Deep is actually all alone, and uh, I don't know, this is... Perfect example. Yeah, this is this is just um, I, I don't know I don't know what to say about this one. They're splitting up way too much in a situation where they can take a team fight at five. Yeah, Death Prophet's a great pushing hero, but not really a great ratting hero because if she's by herself, that's kind of what happens. We'll see Hani finish off the disruptor mid as he just bursts him down and starting to kind of snowball out of control. Sand King uses his stun onto a rise. Skewer pushes him to the low ground, right into Hani's face. Weehaw's coming in, will pounce onto a rise and start going hard. But in comes Solitude, with the ep epicenter. But Hani, he had a BKB on. He doesn't even really care all that much. Hani now with a triple kill as BBC just keeps shoving into him. It's a one for four. Or if you count the Death Prophet, and it's exactly what you're talking about. They're just playing split up, kind of in disarray. And I, I would like to say it was a good epicenter, but with the BKB on Hani, it did basically no damage. Yeah, and they're losing another tier 2 tower. It's gotten to the point where they've given so many extra kills to Fnatic that they shouldn't have gotten that. that uh, the Fnatic are not only feeling super confident, but they can just walk around the map really. And fallen. with the gem on Hani, that means Weeha can no longer apply solo kill pressure on just measly supports like the like come with me that's TPing out because he would have been spotted. So it's it's just a lot of things in the rough right now for them. They've they've lost way too many free kills to be able to hold their towers and hold the line overall. And Weeha is gonna try to make up for some some of what they have lost. If Ace is not careful, he will get caught out here. But there is a ward, and they actually just spotted him out. His blade ran out just in time, so he'll be able to get away safely. Yeah, a great ward placement right in the middle of the jungle, and he blinks as Weeha just goes back to farming down bottom. So these kind of back-to-back -back failed fights, Weeha still doesn't really have that much uh, progression towards his Scotty. He's sitting on 1,800 gold, still with only one ultimate orb, none of the other core pieces picked up, not even orb of venom. So it's still a long ways coming. Meanwhile, you've got this Ursa who has 6,200 gold. And I uh, imagine a part of Tarrasque will be the next item for Hani. Synergize as well with the Enrage from Ursa. And, of course, helps him tank up a bit. But uh, whatever it is that he wants, he's got some serious progression under his belt. And oh, he just goes raw yeah, Abyssal, I think is Yeah, I think he w wants Abyssal. Because even after the BKB, Abyssal lets him fight. If you get that Lucky Bash, you have a chance to just wait out your cooldowns and apply the Overpower again. Which means it's pretty much another guaranteed kill. So okay. I think it's a nice pickup and uh, a good way to close out the game if they want to keep fighting. And that's right. certainly what they should do because even though BBC made so many mistakes, sorry, normally if you make this kind of like sloppy pay plays and mistakes, the enemy team will just take complete advantage. But, uh, but BBC's lineup is geared towards that kind of mid late game where they can stage a comeback. So. Yeah. That's a good point. The Slark will still eventually outcarry the Ursa if this goes on for another 20, 30 minutes or so. And um, yeah, maybe the right for Fnatic to stay aggressive as they will take out this tier 2 tower down bottom. Well, Hani just being cautious, doing what damage he can, and then blinking back to safety when it seems like there could be some trickery coming his way. He does have a level or a 9 second BKB still and holding on to that gym. Hani comes in to finish off the tower. We hop going for the deny. Can't quite find it. Ace blinks forward but won't find the hoof stomp. And it will end up just being a free tower for Fnatic as they mount their escape and 
Head back to their quadrant of the map. Third Roche. Well, we've gotten into the RNG timer, but a relatively long one, about two minutes past the eight. And Fnatic will have to be a little more patient if they want to wait for that cheese before they look to take another strong fight. But there's the Abyssal you were talking about. Yeah, nice pickup again. Um, the fact that the Empower stays through the BKB means that Ursa will be help will be able to fight even better now. Although Ursa's not a hero that's lacking damage, the one thing the Empower really helps him through is just getting that extra farm and pushing out waves faster. And at this point, Ursa's not a hero that can be contested around the map. Anybody on BBC will fall to this Ursa. Even the Slark can't burst with his initial Fire's shadow damage. Has been so, everybody's afraid of Hani right now. Uh, they should be. Oh, mm -hmm. Weeha, no, he's getting closer now. I'm basically a point booster away, but they see him in the jungle. And Hani will move in. Oh, gets, man, Oh, boy, just oh, no, chopping him down. Oh, he didn't? Oh, that was just a bash. I, yeah, I yeah. thought he bistled him too. That's a whiffed RP from Arise. Oh, man. Well, that was that was awkward. Yeah. I guess he didn't notice in time, which is weird, because he actually casted spells. Hmm. Yeah, I thought he canceled casted the RP, but it, it went off. Maybe he just uh, miss, missed the, the cancel a little little too late there, but... Yeah. Ugh. Well, I guess the RP isn't too, too bad. I mean, the cooldown is relatively short at this point, and you know BBC mm -hmm. is not really going to try to push or take advantage of that cooldown. I think the bigger story is that they did let away, let the Slark get away. That was kind of their ticket into the enemy base, because if this Slark at this point, you know, you're pointing out the lack of Scotty and how much gold he needed for quite some time now. If he was forced into a buyback, game was pretty much sealed. Yeah, that's true. And oh, oh down Petrino's bottom, we'll see Hani grab Petrino. Oh, this time he uses the Abyssal, and that secures the kill onto the Undying. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Solitude. Almost finds a solo kill on Ace. He's picked up the Veil, got a full epicenter, but the Centaur just a little too tanky. Uses his new BKB, and will be able to live. Arise, trying to create some space for oh, him here. Right. Four staff nice after play. four staff. We uh, won't be able to find the kill, but Arise, he'll just TP out. No way for Slark to interrupt it, and he'll live. Yeah, that was just a really, really nice four staff on Ace, because Slark would have been able to pick him off otherwise, and probably get out as well with the Shadow Blade. And the pounds and the guy, the, the guys of the shadow dance itself. So, really, really nice awareness. Mm -hmm. And now the third Roche is up. It will be Fnatic that moves into the pit and will be uncontested. Aegis of the Immortal goes to Ursa. They leave the cheese on the ground for Ogre McGee here. And now he'll have that huge regeneration piece. He also has completed his eggs. I don't think we mentioned the actual timing, yeah. but. The double fire blast is pretty scary, especially once hit once he hits level 16. There's always that chance for the back-to-back -back 4x multicast, which is just some game-breaking RNG. So always a fun item pick up on the ogre. Yeah, you, you talk about skill cap champions, skill cap heroes. This is one of them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So said our 3200 goal. I reckon he'll be looking towards a heart of Tarask. Not the best pipe game. I guess it does help negate the damage from the Sand King now that he has a veil of Discord, but. Um, we'll see what Ace picks up as he moves by the side shop, and it will indeed be the Reaver. So Heart of Trask comes out onto the Centaur, and Hani, he's up to 2,800 gold. We'll see what he wants to grab next, but there's your big pickup for BBC, and it is Weeha with his Scotty, finally complete here at the 33-minute mark. That's really, really good news for them. Again, Fnatic, they, they're kind of pressing the advantage right now, but they're not really pressuring lane that much. I mean, again, their heroes aren't really designed for that. All they can really do is force fights. And of course, Arise has to kind of stay in the dark, which means he can't push the waves he, as he wants to with his fantastic shockwave ability. So it's kind of just on to Hani to play Superman mode at this point with his Aegis and 3k gold to follow back, fall back on. But BBC are just adapting really well into the stage, and despite all things, they might be able to pull things out here as they say that hockey gets picked up. Yep, a Bissel Blade comes down, and Ursa just finding the solo pickoff. The wicked 6 streak continues, and that's the great thing about the Bissel Blade. If you find somebody in a solo scenario like that, you better believe they're gonna die. Mm -hmm. That Abyssal item, it's, it's quite interesting by design. It's like one of those items that um, you don't necessarily want all the time, but when you get it on, in specific conditions, like Animage and Ursa, those heroes with Abyssal, like even with PA, you know, these heroes, they really excel and show the full potential of the item. But now, with is, that momentum, they'll yeah. follow up with the bottom push. Yeah, now, this is scary. DP does not have gold for buyback here. Uh, and they have a fresh refresher up on a rise. So this is a double RP, Aegis Cheese with no DP for 20 seconds. Glyph is not available either. 
This is bad news bears. Fourth Vulcan bears. <laughs> <laughs> bad news bears indeed, man. And oh, here we go. The fight will break out. They'll go right in on Pedrino. Centaur will go down first. Levy gets completely repelled by the Centaur. In comes Solitude with a big epicenter. Does a lot of damage, but unfortunately his teams are even cleaned up, and there's just no follow-up damage. Turbo is going to lose their disruptor also. Still no buybacks have been used. Weeha's not even here. He's up top trying to do rap Dota, but hey, man, you're not nature's prophet. You're not going to be able to kill those structures too quick. Quickly, Hockey, he'll finally respawn, uses his BKB, but he can't do anything but BKB and walk back to the well. He just isn't powerful enough. They'll come back, try to bring down Weeha. They will repel him. It will cost them the Skywrath from Hitch to reinitiate on the rise. And the stun from Ace. They've got some sort of detection. The gem's on the Ogre, and yeah, multicast him down. So it will be a lane of barracks in exchange for a tier 3 tower, but a huge fight for Fnatic in terms of how many kills they picked up. They forced a buyback onto the Disruptor, and they only lost their Skywrath Mage. Yeah, they also killed the Slark, which is the biggest thing. Losing Raxus at this point, it's... I mean, after the Death Prophet died, it was kind of... It was pretty much an impending loss there at the bottom lane, but the Slark falling at the top lane is not something... That should have happened. I think uh, Weeha came in with a nice play, just hit behind the two trees at the top lane there and tried to snipe out another target, but decided to hold back against it. And I think that's a lot of things to say about this game too. He's, he, he had a lot of opportunities where he kind of could have gone in, but he was kind of afraid of the enemy team, and rightfully so, because they were kind of just dominating them around the map when it comes to killing heroes. I mean, you have every hero on Fnatic that can either silence him up or stun him up, one way or another. Mm -hmm. So, just it, the opportunities weren't seized at the right times, and I guess I guess this is just the results. I, I really do think he should have been present at the bottom fight, though. I think uh, they have to have a team decision decision of either not holding that tower or not holding those raxes, or just all staying back and letting Weha doing his rat thing at the top lane. Because if they commit half by half, this is the result: is that they lose everything at bottom and they lose everything at top as well. Yeah, I, I think it could have worked if that was a rat Dota hero. You know, if that's a Lycan or a Nature's Prophet or someone that can actually truck through structures, that works out. But Slark is just not one of them. Nor does he have any items that let him push better. No Desolator, no Assault Karas. So it's pretty slow going. Now we'll see Weehaas look to initiate here, but needs to be careful. There is a gem inbound. Uh, come with me. Does live for the initial onslaught, but still falls. Does manage to get off the Mystic Flare, and now they'll go in. Pedrino, the first to go down on the side of the Radiant. Solitude again with a decent epi, but it's just not enough. He'll force that out of the low ground with a few hit points. Honey blinks down, pokes him once more. That'll make it a two for one as the godlike streak for the Ursa continues. He's now picked up a butterfly and an item that's a lot better on Ursa now than it was in the last patch because of that flood. Yeah. So now you've got that extra sprint to close the gap if need be. Yeah, it, it makes uh, it makes it makes for a perfect item on Ursa. Honestly, that flutter ability is is so so convenient. And um, I guess a lot of people have been questioning like uh, at ESL recently in the finals, Artizi picked up the butterfly and the shadow fiend. Mm -hmm. And again, the item what it gives to the heroes the AGI heroes who previously kind of got kited through their BK timers, it just buffs them so hard. Yep. Has fallen. So now we'll see the last outer tower for uh, BBC go down. Fnatic is moving straight into the high ground. There is a glyph, but Haki gets initiated and skewered back from a rise, and it's a dead death prop to get things started. And again, she is not uh, within realm of a buyback, so that's minute with no exorcism, no DP. The ultimate's on cooldown anyhow. She used it in that last fight, so a little bit useless, but it's a 5v4 on the field. Tier 3 tower goes down, and looks like this exposed lane of bear may be in some trouble. Weeha around the back, side, looking to initiate Disruptor, gets picked off around the front. Weeha misses the pounce onto a rise. Oh no, you needed that oh, one, friend. Now he gets stunned up, he gets abyssaled, and the Slark gets turned into sushi as he's chopped down. <laughs> GG gets called from BBC, and honestly, here, Claire Boyens, I think not a moment too soon. Yeah, Honey Bear was the stronger bear in this game, and unfortunately for them, again, they made a. They did make a lot of mistakes in the mid game, and it's, it's hard to put it another way. Like, the way they got picked off, just pushing into the enemy, enemy sides of the map elsewhere, at bottom lane, the DP going in alone, Weeha, he didn't get so much picked up as he did kind of miss farm because he was looking for targets. And honestly, Solitude, like the Sanctuary, he could have landed some better stunts, and with the first epicenter whipping and the first Roshan fight happening the way it did, it just. It kind of spiraled downhill from that point. Even though they could have come back, you know, with the with the amount of kills they were giving in the mid game unnecessarily, it was very hard.